Good morning, my dear students. Welcome to St. Michael's e-learning classes. My name is Francis sir. And today, my dear children, we will be studying chapter number 7 of social science for standard 5. And the name of the chapter is Equatorial Climate. So let's read and understand this chapter. Equatorial regions are found on both sides of the equator. It falls in the torrid heat zone of the earth and experiences hot and wet climate. This is because the region gets direct sun rays from the earth. So when we come to equatorial regions, we must understand that it, it, it is found on both sides of the equator. And it falls in the torrid heat zone of the earth and it experiences very hot and wet climate. This is because this region gets direct sun rays from the earth. So because of this reason that is since the torrid uh, heat zone, it, it receives direct rays from the earth. That's why this region experiences hot and wet climate. Now let's see the climate. The equatorial region has an extreme climate. It is home to both the world's densest forest, rainforest like Amrita forest. So when we come to the planet, we see that the equatorial region has a very extreme climate that, that we have already seen. It is the home of to both the world's densest rainforest like the Amazon forest. The equatorial region is characterized by convectional rainfall. Convectional rainfalls are very heavy and frequent and are confined to a small area. It is often accompanied by thunderstorms and mainly occurs at around 4 o'clock in the evening. This type of rainfall is heavy because the rate of evaporation and condensation in the equatorial belt which is higher than in the other regions. In the equatorial region, average temperature is 30 degrees centigrade throughout the year. It records a small diurnal range of temperature. This region experiences equal day of the equal length of day and night. It is because there is hardly any season variation. So the equatorial region, my dear children, it is characterized by convection rainfall. Now, what is convection rainfall? Convection rainfalls are very heavy and frequent. That means it happens every now and then. And they are confined. That means they are limited to a small area. It is often accompanied by thunderstorms. Now, what do you mean by thunderstorms, my dear children? Thunderstorms are a storm with thunder, lightning, and heavy rain. So when we have a, 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 temp a, a climate in which there is very much a lightning, Heavy rain and strong gush of winds are flowing every now and then. That in the particular climate is called thunderstorms. So they are accompanied, that is, convection rainfall are accompanied by thunderstorms and it mainly occurs at 4 o'clock in the evening. This is because this type of rainfall is heavy. So convection rainfall are, is very heavy. Because the rate of evaporation and condensation in the equatorial belt is higher than in other regions. So the rainfall is very heavy for convection rainfall because evaporation as well as condensation in this region is higher than any other regions. In the equatorial region, average temperature is around 30 degree from the year. It records a small diagonal range of temperature. Now what do you mean by diagonal range of temperature? Diagonal range of temperature is difference between the daily maximum and minimum temperature. So the difference between the daily maximum and minimum temperatures are known as diagonal range. So it records a very small diagonal range of temperature. And this region experiences equal lengths of day and night. It is because there is hardly any season variation. So there is not no season variation when it comes to the equatorial region. Now let's see the distribution of the equatorial region. Equatorial region spreads across almost all the continents. It includes the Caribbean islands in North America and Brazil, Colombia and Ecuador in South America. So the equatorial region, it is spread along many continents and it includes Caribbean islands in North America and Brazil, Colombia and Ecuador in South America. It also includes Liberia, Uganda, Kenya, Republic of the Congo and the Democratic Republic of Congo and Africa. So it also includes uh, places such as Liberia, Uganda, Kenya, Republic of the Congo and the Democratic Republic of Congo in Africa. In Asia, it spreads around Malaysia, Maldives, Indonesia, and Philippines. So in Asia, it spreads around Malaysia, Maldives, Indonesia, and Philippines. Now this is the Indian portion. In India, it covers the peninsular regions and the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. So in India, it covers the peninsular regions and the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Now let's see the next topic, flora. Equatorial forests comprise 
dense rainforest. These are evergreen forests which are marked by luxuriant growth of trees. The trees are so dense that very little sunlight reaches the ground. They are known as rainforests because they thrive on heavy rainfall. So, different regions they are categorized or they are, they are uh, filled with dense rainforests. Now, what are these? These are evergreen forests which are marked by luxuriant growth of trees. So, abundant growth of trees are found. And the trees are so much dense that very little sunlight reaches the ground. So, they are known as rainforests. So, the trees are known as the heavenly tree the forests are also known as the rainforest because they thrive on heavy rainfall. Equivalent forests have a four tire layer of vegetation. The forest floor or the ground usually has decomposed leaves and roots. The layer above it is known as the understory. So, even in forest, it has a four layer of vegetation. The forest floor, that is the ground floor, usually has decomposed leaves and fruits. The layer above, it is known as the understory. It comprises small trees, shrubs, creepers and vines. So, understory comprises small trees, shrubs, creeps, creepers and vines. Above this layer is the umbrella like layer called the canopy. It consists of four trees. Now, what is canopy by definition? Canopy are the top layer of a tree which is found in equal rainforests. So, canopies are consisting of all trees. The tallest trees form the topmost layer known as the emerging tree. So, the tallest trees form the topmost layer known as the emerging layer. This is the topmost portion. This layer receives a lot of sunlight and rain. So, as because it is lying on the topmost region, that's why it receives a lot of sunlight, sunlight and rain. The forest appears evergreen because different types of trees shed the leaves in different seasons. Evergreen, mahogany, and rosewood are some of the tree spe uh, species found in these forests. So, uh, this type of forest, they are evergreen because different types of trees shed the leaves at various seasons. And what are those, uh, the various types of trees which are found? Ebony, mahogany, and rosewood are some of the species found in these forests. Now, let's see fauna. Equatorial forest have an exotic wildlife. The Amazon rainforest is a storehouse of the world's most amazing animal species like anaconda, glass frog, golden lion, tamarind, Amazon river dolphin, and iguana. So, equivalent rainforest, uh, rain, uh, forests have an exotic wildlife. Exotic means it has uh, an abundance or it has a lot of wildlife present in it. The Amazon rainforest is the storehouse of the world's most amazing animal species. So, the Amazon forest is a storehouse. It, it means lot, uh, various types of species are found, which are not available at other places. Like anaconda, gla uh, glass frog, golden lion cavalry, Amazon river dolphin, and iguana. The Congo basins and forests of Southeast Asia are known for primary species like gorilla, chimpanzee, and orang -pan. So the Congo Basin and rain, uh, forests of Southeast Asia, they are known for primate species. Now what are primate? They are a member of the most developed and intelligent group of mammals including humans. So in the, uh, the Congo Basin and the forests of Southeast Asia, we see a lot of uh, intelligent group of species like gorilla, chimpanzee and orang -Rutan. Many species of monkeys like the howler monkey, squirrel monkey and baboons are also in also inhabiting these channels. So apart from these animals, we have other type of intelligent species of animals like the howler monkey, squirrel monkey and the baboons. They are also available in this region. Birds, now let's see the birds. Birds like dogs, macaws, hummingbirds and parakeets reside in this type of vegetation. So apart from animals, birds also found in the equal rainforest that is Tokens, macaws, hummingbirds, and parakeets. These are the birds which are found in the equatorial forest. Now, let's see about the people who live in the equatorial rainforest. Let's see about them. Equatorial rainforests are very thick and remain largely inaccessible. They are mainly inhabited by natives or tribes. These include natives of the Amazon basin, pygmies of the Congo basin. Jara birds of the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, Simmons of Malaysia, Kubus of Sumatra and Dyaks of Bonnie. So, equal rainforests are very much thick and they remain largely inaccessible. Inaccessible means 
they are not easily available or people they do not enter that area so nicely or so comfortably. They are really inhabited that is included forests are really occupied by tribals or natives and these include natives of the Amazon basin, pygmies of the copper basin, Jarabas of the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, Simons of Malaysia, Pupus of Sumatra and Dyers of Mori. They are all the natives of the Amazon basin. Many of these tribes lead a nomadic life. They live mainly by hunting. They also practice subsistence farming and fifty cultivation. In subsistence farming, farmers cultivate just above enough to sustain themselves and the families. In shifting cultivation, farmers burn and clear a patch of forest land. They cultivate the soil till it loses its fertility. Then they shift to another area and continue the same practice. These groups also carry out livestock rearing and fishing to supplement their diet. So when we come to the lives of the tribal people, the natives people, we see that we, they lead a nomadic life. Nomadic life means they are not uh, living in one particular place forever. They are a shifting, they are moving. They also practice subsistence farming and shifting cultivation. Now what, what do you mean by these two terms? Let's see. In subsistence farming, farmers cultivate just about enough to sustain themselves and the family. And the families. In subsistence farming, farmers cultivate the crops which are just above a little so that they can survive and they can also allow the families to survive. They don't put extra. In shifting cultivation, farmers burn and clear a patch of forest and they cultivate the soil till it loses fertility. Then they shift to another area. So when you come to shifting cultivation, you see that the farmers what they do, they take up a, a patch of forest land, they burn it, then they cultivate the crops on that particular soil, on that particular area, and once when that particular area loses fertility, that is when it loses its in its ability to grow crops, then they move out to another place. These groups also carry out rates of grazing and fishing to supplement the diet. Apart from cultivation, they also uh, 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 you can say they depend on livestock rearing, that is, they keep animals and fishing. Also, rivers draining these forests offer inland navigation and fishing opportunities. So, when we come to the rivers, we see that rivers which are draining in the rural forests they offer inland navigation. That is, people are able to be able to travel using oceans, boats and ships because rivers are available, and it also provides fishing opportunities. That is, people are able to use or uh, people are able to uh, uh, earn the living through fishing. Minerals like natural gas and petroleum gas are mined in the Amazon forest. So, when we come to minerals and other natural gases, we see that minerals like natural gas and petroleum, especially petroleum, are also mined in the Amazon forest. Copper and precious stones are mined in Congo basin. So, apart from uh, natural gas and petroleum, copper and precious stones are also mined in the Congo basin. So, my dear children, in this way, we have completed chapter number 7 of social science for standard 5.